Hi guys, it's Vana, the Twisted Stitcher, and today I'm going to teach you how I made the Farmhouse Christmas models that appear on the front of Diane's series, Farmhouse Christmas. All nine models were made exactly the same. I'm going to share with you a secret that I've been working on six to eight months that I have noticed have made a complete difference in the way my soft finishes look once they're stuffed. It's just a simple thing that I started to incorporate and it has made a world of difference. I'm going to share that secret. I'm going to share with you where I got all of the components that comprise the ornaments for Farmhouse Christmas. And I will tell you where I purchased those. I am not advertising for any company. I'm not getting any money or anything like that for anything that I'm sharing with you. I'm just a regular Joe that buys my stuff where I can find it. So. Let's get started with what we're gonna do here today, okay? What you need is your stitched piece. Mine is stitched on the 32 count natural raw linen from Zweigert. It is not the 30, 30 count Northern Cross that the models were stitched on, but as you can see, mine looks very much similar to the models. Um, Diane has more information on her website that shares uh, a new company that has picked up what the 30, 30 count Northern Cross linen was and where you can find that. Okay, so I've got the little red barn here. In a minute, we're going to cut out the margins, okay? The next thing you'll need is red homespun. See, it matches really well with the little red barn, the red that's used in the in this. I got this at Hobby Lobby. Um, I wanna encourage you to get enough because as I go through this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how I get each of my things that are a series to look the same, okay? So you'll need your stitched piece, red homespun. You'll need twine. I got this at Michael's. The company is Celebrate It. You will need to finish your ornaments, you will need three rolls of these. If you're gonna do all nine of them, you will need three rolls of this Celebrate It twine. You'll need jute ribbon. This is just natural jute ribbon. Um, it's also by Celebrate It. I also got this at Michael's. They also sell it at Hobby Lobby under a different company, but the, it's the same stuff. And um, you can also find it at Joann's, I believe. I think Joann's also has some. It's, of course, it's not Celebrate It, but Michael's carries Celebrate It, and I got this at Michael's. Okay? The next thing that you'll need is... The Jingle Bells, these are six, well, they're one-fourth of an inch in size. From Factory Craft Direct, they come in multiple sizes, not, they come in millimeter sizes, not inch sizes. So this is six millimeters, but you can get six millimeters, 10 millimeters, or 13 millimeters, and they're essentially the same size. I don't know exactly which ones. I think that these are six millimeters, but I'm not certain. This is a half inch Jingle Bell. This is a half inch, and the half inch is not sold in millimeters. It will say half inch Jingle Bell. So this is a half inch Jingle Bell. You can see what that looks like in, in relation to the half inch. This is really, honestly, a fourth of an inch. It's either 6, 10, or 13 millimeters, and it'll be fine, okay? This is 3 eighths of an inch Jingle Bell. Even that one would be fine, and I believe this one is the 13 millimeter one, okay? And you can see there's not much difference in size, and this one would be as fine as this one, okay? So don't sweat over what size. You don't want the half inch, of course, but either of those two sizes... 6, 10, or 13 millimeters is what you want to get, and that's how they are found on Factory Craft Direct. 
you want to look up, just go to Factory Craft Direct and put in the search box, Rusty Jingle Bells, and you will find them. Okay, I will have all of this in the show notes, where to find this, what, what you purchase, and um, for easy for you to find, or to buy, go look for and find, okay? All right, so, we're going to do these with three-fourths of an inch, all right? Three-fourths of an inch margin. I have my quadrant ruler, I've got my roadie rotary cutter. I'm going to set this down and I'm going to do a three-fourths of an inch margin from the edge of the stitched piece to my to where I cut. Okay, so three-fourths of an inch. I'm looking to line it up at the top and then I'm also looking to line it up on the sides. Okay, so I have my line I have a line right along the edge of the stitching on this side and I have my three-fourths of an inch lined up right there. Once it's lined up, you cut it, okay? All right. Then you rotate. We know this is a good cut here, so we're gonna line up our line, a ruler line on that edge, and we're gonna line up our three-fourths of an inch along the edge of the stitching here. Once that's perfect, cut it. Okay, we turn it. We know this line is good, so we put this right there to line that edge up and three-fourths of an inch along the line of the stitched area and we cut it okay turn it again line it up here because we know that's good line up our three-fourths of an inch along that line St stitched edge and we cut it, okay? Okay, so now we have our piece with a margin of three-fourths of an inch on all four sides. Now then, I always just kind of go through and check it visually on all four sides to make sure I didn't mess it up, and I didn't, okay? Now then, so this is how big all of our ornaments are gonna be. I know that I'm gonna make nine ornaments that are gonna look exactly the same. I'm gonna finish them exactly the same. Here is how I get my ornaments to be uniform and exactly the same, same each and every time. Homespun is very easy to rip so that you maintain your line, the same line all the way down. I like to, you, to have just a little bit of margin around, so I always cut it just a little bit bigger, like a fourth of an inch bigger than what I need. I made a little cut there, right there, and I'm going to rip it, okay? All right, so I've got my my strip of cloth here. Now then, I've got one square that's gonna match all the ornaments and so I just lay that on top and I just cut until I have nine squares. All right, so now I have 
nine homespun squares. And I know that each one of my ornaments, I've already got, I'm going to have like a kit where I have all my stuff ready, okay? So we're going to save one of these squares to use to finish today, okay? So we're going to set that aside with that, all right? Now then, you'll need three of these, and I have three other rolls of this, okay? Or two other rolls of this, but you'll need one, three ornaments. This will do three ornaments, so you need three rolls of it, okay? Set that aside. Now then, our bows. I'm going to show you how I make my bows, but I'm just going to get a good idea of how, what size. Okay, I always do it just a little bit bigger because I trim off and, and mess with it when I finish, but this is basically how big my bow is. It is, let's see, it is three inches from right there. The bow is about three inches, okay? So this length is what I'll need to make bows. I'm gonna have nine ornaments, so I'm gonna cut nine lengths. Okay, so you only need one of these. Sometimes they come in different, this is five yards. So sometimes they come in different sizes. Make sure you have at least a five yard roll and you only need one then. Okay, so here is eight lengths of the, of the ribbon that I'll be using for the bows for the other eight ornaments. So I put that on my pile of my other things that I need for my other. This is how we're gonna get uniform ornaments every time. I have my four bells that I need for my ornament. I'm gonna set that there. Now I'm gonna go get four times eight is 32. I'm gonna go get 32 bells and I'll be right back. Here's 32 bells. I'm gonna put them in my pack. Here is eight lengths of ribbon that we're gonna use for my bow, my bows on the other eight ornaments. I'm gonna put that in my pack. Here is my eight, eight squares of homespun that we're gonna use on the other eight ornaments. I'm gonna put that in my pack. I'm gonna go get two more rows of this and put it in my pack. Here's my two other rows of rolls of twine that I use, same. Sorry, my husband's doing work upstairs. Two more rows, rolls of twine that I use. I'm gonna put it in my pack, okay? Now then, I know that I have everything in this pack that I need all cut to size, all uniform so that each one will look exactly like the one I'm gonna make today. I suggest that you do that. And this is what I do so I know what it is and I don't forget. I get myself a piece of paper and I write on there exactly what it is. So it's LHNs. Get down. So this is my pack, and I'm gonna write on there, LHNs, Farmhouse Christmas. Okay. And then I'm gonna remind myself exactly what margins I cut this to so that I don't forget. And so I'm gonna put margins three-fourths of an inch, okay? I put this in here, I zip it up, and now I know that I have everything I need to make Sorry, my cats are having a fight 
right in the middle of my tutorial. But here I have everything I need to make eight, the remaining eight farmhouse Christmas ornaments. I suggest, highly recommend I do this I, I honestly do, so that each one of my ornaments always look uniform. When I knew that I was going to finish um, Diane's models, I did this for myself, and I put it on my design board, my remember this board. I have a cork board. I just put it up there, and then every time I got models to finish, I pulled it down, and I knew exactly what I was doing because I did not finish all nine at the same time. We finish, always finish three at a time. So, anyways, that's how I do it. I highly recommend that that's how you do it. All right, now then, we're going to get down to finishing because I'm ready. Are you? I hope so. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to my ironing board, and I'm going to show you what I do next, okay? All right, here we are at the ironing board. I'm going to show you that here's my piece got my iron heating up. I'm going to put PF, no, P44F is the interfacing that I use. It's by Pellon and I get it by the bolt at Joann's. They do sell just yardage of it at Joann's. I buy from Joann's.com and I get it on the bolt. I'm going to cut two squares, one for my gingham and one for my stitched piece. Okay, so You want to feel it where the glue is. The glue is goes against your material, okay? We're going to set this aside. It has the interfacing on one side. Set it aside. Now then, I'm also going from the back side, I'm going to iron this and I'm going to spray Best Press. I sprayed it just around the edge, not on the red.
glue side down. Now then we're going to trim the extra parts off. Now then, here's my secret. White quilting cotton. And when we get back over to the desk, I'm gonna show you, but I'm gonna cut a square of white quilting cotton. I'm going to best press that. All right, so I'm going to take my quilting cotton, that, and that, and we're going to go back over to the thing, back over to the desk. All right, we're back here at the cutting table, or my work table, and we're gonna layer our piece of quilting cotton, and I'm gonna show you something. I want you to look at how this looks. How does this look with just that, okay? See it? Now I'm gonna show you how what a difference it makes. Okay, see what it looks like there, and then what a difference it makes to put it on top of there. Can you see how different that is? That's what has made the entire difference in this series. Put it right there. And what the addition of that white piece of material that allows that light to reflect back to your eye. I've lined, I've began lining every soft piece that I do with white quilting cotton. My secret is that you line all your soft finishes with quilting cotton. It makes all the difference, okay? All right, let's get back to it. I'm gonna put a pin in it. Let me get my pins. So that it doesn't shift, okay? All right, now I'm gonna lay this down. We're gonna make our sewing sandwich. So I lay down my gingham. I wanna make sure that it's square so that the backs are square, okay? It's not wonky. I'm gonna lay this down. And I always do extra around and I trim when I'm done sewing. And I'm going to pin all together like a sandwich. So we're doing pretty sides together because we'll be turning out, okay? All right, there it is. We're gonna go over and sew now. Okay, so we're back at the sewing machine. I've got my presser foot, my fourth of an inch presser foot, ow, lined up. We're gonna sew across the stop, the bottom. We are going to leave a space to turn and come off the end, okay? So sink your needle. 
begin to sew and then I'm going to reverse it and then sew to about right here stop return reverse it to lock pull up and then I'm gonna pull cut it the threads I'm gonna leave about a two to two inch space drop my needle begin to sew sew and let it come off the end reverse and go forward again to lock and then pull it okay I'm going to do this on all four sides all right we're here back at the table I'm going to clip the corners and trim first I'm going to trim all the the extra material off. Okay, now then, I'm gonna clip my corners and these are reinforced corners because we reversed back and forth at all the corners and I'm just gonna clip right across them like that. I'm trimming all of my threads. All right, throw away my. I'm going to go press my seams open. I'll be right back. I'm poking them out and I'm going to tell you right now that white lining see the white liner is right there right that makes it those corners so nice and they're easily square and you can just work oh it just make I just can't begin to tell you <laughs> how nice what an improvement I have found lining my corners and if you notice I, I'm talking and not but as I go from corner to corner I, I run my all along that corner to open that seam. I'm gonna go iron this one last time. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back, I've ironed it. Look how straight those seams are. Perfect. Okay, now we're gonna stuff. So I'm gonna get my Chinese, or my um, chopstick. Got my piece, got my chopstick. Now I'm gonna get my stuffing. Again, I use Mountain Mist Polyfill. Mountain Mist, not Polyfill, Fiberfill, okay? Polyfill's a brand name. Okay. I'm layering it in there, okay? I'm just layering it, okay? And I'm gonna stuff, and I'll speed this up so you don't have to watch it. You can just watch what I'm doing, but I layer it in there. Layer, layer, layer.
All right, I've got it stuffed. There's my opening. Here's my back. Okay, I'm gonna blind stitch this closed. So how I do that, is I put pins to hold it together. And I'm gonna get my needle loaded up and we're gonna go. I take a piece of wax and I run it through my sewing thread a couple times. Doing beeswax on your sewing thread um, makes it stronger. Make a knot and clip your tail. Sink your sink your needle, your um, knot back in the edge and then come forward right to the edge of where you're going to start stitching. And we're going to do the ladder stitch or the blind stitch or whatever you want to call it. Pinch those together. And we're going to run right along the seam, seam of the linen. Just tiny, tiny stitches. Just little bites. So we're coming out the linen. Now we're going to pick up the opposite side of the gingham. On the linen side, tiny, tiny, tiny stitches. Now we're up on the other side of the gingham. Tiny bites, linen. See what we're doing? See how it is there? Let me close it. Okay? So you just keep doing this all along the edge. end off make your loose you leave a little bit of a loop and then you go through it twice your lasso pull it tight go right down beside it come out the end pull it to hide and then clip Okay, now then, there's a little straggler thread right here, so I'm going to clip that. Okay, so now we're ready for the cording. Okay. You load up your needle with your thread. You have it started with right in the center, okay? Right in the center, you have your thread sunk with your knot, you're going to get about six inches, six inches of twine. You're going to lay where the six inches is right there. You're going to go through, through the twine, and then you're just going to start sewing through the twine. You grab a little bit of the linen and just like a thread or two, of the linen, a thread or two of the material so that it falls right in that sewing 
seam. And you pull tight and see, you're going to see a little bit of the thread, but not really much of it. And you're going to do that with the twist of the twine into the twist of the twine all the way around. Okay, so now you will see that it's all around the outside edges. I want to show you from the back. See, you effectively cannot, I mean, you can see a few through there, but really it's not bad. I don't like using invisible thread. I know that Diane put on the chart that she recommends using invisible thread. I don't like using invisible thread. I think it's hard to work with, and I think that it's not necessary. So, sorry, Diane. Anyways, um, you just go all the way around the edge until you meet back up to the middle. And then you wrap it around and just go back in that to hold those two pieces of twine together. See, I held it two together. Now I'm going to end off. I'm just going to make it my lasso go through twice and end off. Sink it, the knot, and then cut. Okay. All right. Now then, I'm going to cut. I'm still connected to my. I'm still connected to my thing, so I'm going to the roll. So I'm going to cut you know, an equal length of that. Okay, so we can put this back in our bag, back in our bag for using what we're using. And um, before we put our bag completely away, I like to have my ornaments hang with about a three inch. So I'm gonna measure three inches and I'm gonna cut it. Wait a minute, let me make sure that that's three inches. Let's see, I'm gonna do four inches. Four inches, and we're gonna cut it. Let me make sure. Yep. Okay, so I'm gonna write on my, my paper here, I have a three-fourths of an inch margin, and I'm gonna write hanger is four inches, okay? Now then, I've got my kit for my finishing already with my notes, okay? Now then, make another knot in your thread. And we're going to sew our hanger together. Clip the end so there's no trailing tail. 
We're going to hold these ends together. And we're going to go through both of them. We're going to catch that knot, then we're going to wrap it around. About 10 times, okay? So you can see that we're wrapping it around about 10 times. I'm going to go up underneath the wrap. twice okay so that catches it and then I'm gonna go back and forth a few times sewing through the ten wraps mm. Augie okay so I know that's on good I'm gonna wrap it again and make a knot and end it okay so through my lasso twice pull it to make a knot and now I'm gonna cut it Augie okay so there's our hanger okay all right now we're gonna sew on the bells okay I've got a little bit of water on a towel and I wash these off and then I dry them off just so that if there's any you don't want that discoloring your linen. All right, now then. These shanks are very sharp and they will cut your, your thread really easy. So this is what I recommend doing. I recommend doubling. First of all, you wax your thread, okay? Very heavily. That'll give it strength and protect it, okay? Now then, you double it up. Instead of doing a single, it's like you're gonna double up, do the loop method, like when we're cross-stitching, and load your needle. You go to a corner, okay, go to the corner, and you're just gonna loop it on the corner so that you're ready to, to go, okay? Get one of your bells and just sew it on. Just loop it, loop it round and round on the twine. Through the shank, around the twine. You come from behind, behind the, the jingle like this, it'll stay to the front, okay? And that's what you want. So you wanna go into the twine, and then from the back, go through the jingle shank, and that makes it stay on the front of the ornament, like we want. Okay, now do that like 10, or, 10 times or so, and then you're gonna go under those loops that you made with the, lint, with the thread, like that. Make your lasso. Go through the lasso twice. And then pull it to knot. Okay? And then cut it. And you're going to do that to all four corners. All right, we got all four ornaments, or all four uh, jingle bells on. Now we're gonna make my 
my bows like I make. Wax it, wax my thread, double it up again because you're gonna be pulling tight. Take our ribbon, we're gonna cross it like a pretzel, okay? So make an X with your legs like that and push it down. Let's see where we are. I want it about three inches. That's three inches. That's what it looks like. I'm holding it right there. I put my needle right at the bottom of the where those two legs cross. Make my loop and then I'm going to go make a running stitch up the middle of that bow, okay? Like that. I'm gonna pull it, wrap it from behind, wrap it from behind, and pull it, okay? Then I'm gonna run my needle right up the middle of that again, okay? Run my needle right through the middle of it again. How can I get this? It's too, it's blown out there. Okay, so I'm run, running my needle up again. I'm pulling it. See how tight? Okay, then I'm gonna turn it over. I'm gonna run my needle under the circle pull tight put it over again and make my my knot my lasso go through twice pull it okay now then we're not going to clip this thread okay because we're going to sew it on we're going to take it here put it on our go underneath where we did the two together, sew the two together, and you're just going to go back and forth through the twine to the top of the bow and just go right back in and that catches the bow. Okay, go through the twine, come out the bow. Go right back in where that came out. Go back to the back. I'm just tacking it on from the middle, okay? Just tacking it on from the middle. Okay. I'm gonna take it to the back now because that bow's on good. I'm gonna go where the I looped it before, make my lasso, and end off. Now I'm gonna clip my legs, my legs. I'm gonna hold it like this. Oh, I don't have, in the model, I don't have them clipped like both, so you just clip it at an angle. Both sides. And there's our farmhouse Christmas. I think I'm gonna cut these just a little bit There we go, farmhouse Christmas.